Good evening, everyone. My name is Alicia Sutton. I am a current MSW student. I am a macro master student who is 16 month student and also in the new leaders and African centered social work program. Uh, we have um, our other MSW students with us who will be able to answer your questions um, as you are incoming students. So we thank you all for being here. Um, as we do go along, we do have questions submitted in the Q&A box, so you are able to vote those up um, if you have similar questions, and we will address those first. And if you have additional questions, if we have time, we will address those later. So now we will get started um, with our questions and we'll pass it off to Jordan. Yeah, I don't know if we all wanted to do quick intros really quick, but my name's Jordan. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. Um, I am a student who is focused in social policy and evaluation. And so for all of you who are incoming students, the, the pathways have shifted a little bit. So it would probably be closest to policy and political social work. Um, I'm a 16 month student. I'll be graduating in December. Um, super excited to be here with you all and answer some questions. Um, yeah, and I'll pass it off to Janelle next. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Janelle, pronoun she, her, hers. Um, I'm an advanced standing student in the um, interpersonal practice and mental health track. Um, that has now morphed into the um, integrated uh, mental health, health and substance abuse track. Um, so hopefully I can answer some questions about um, that track as well. Um, and I will pass it off to Tammy. Hi everyone, my name is Tammy and I'm an international student from China. My pronouns are she, her, hers. My concentration area is community organization and my focus uh, practice method is children, youth and families. I'm a 16 month student with an additional term. So yeah, not a typical 16 month student, it kind of complicated. <laughs> yeah, so I just finished my uh, first term field placement at the International Center of the U of M and I will graduate in December 2021. Uh, if you have any questions about, I think, the so global independent study kind of stuff, and yeah, just show me questions. Yeah, so I will pass over to Alberto. Sorry, I forgot my oh, conversation. Good. No worries. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. So my name is Alberto Martinez. Um, I am an MSW student as well. I'm a, on a 16 month track. I'm a geriatric scholar, so my focus is on the aging population. Uh, my concentration is management of human services. Um, I'm also an out-of-state student, so for any out-of-state students who might have questions about transitioning to a new place that they may not have never lived in, um, I'm free to answer those questions as well, but I'm excited to hear from everyone. And now I'll move it on to, oh, I don't think you have a, I don't know if your name is I think Jalea, did you want to introduce yourself really quick? Oh, yes. Um, my name is Jalea. I am um, go by she, her, hers. I'm also an MSW student. Um, my concentration is community organization and my practice area is health. And um, I'm a advanced standing student. I'll be graduating in July. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to answer questions also. Thank you, everyone. And I just remembered I am also um, studying social policy and evaluation in community and social systems, and I'll be graduating in December 2020. So let us get started. Okay, so like we said at the beginning, if you want to submit more questions, you can feel free to do that in the Q&A and then also upvote any questions that you are all wondering and we'll try and prioritize that way. Um, if we run out of time, we will create a, a log of the questions with some answers and they will be sent out afterwards. So please don't worry about that. Um, but we can just roll right into um, the first question. Let me scroll back up. Um, I don't know where we wanna start, if we wanna start broad and then go um, into more specifics. Um, 
at the top, I'm seeing, how did you connect with your classmates before the school year started? Um, did the School of Social Work set up a Facebook or a Canvas page? I know we're all eager to build community in these exceptional times. Um, that's a great question. Uh, the school specifically doesn't set up um, a Facebook page, but in the past, um, someone kind of takes initiative and the word gets around and uh, kind of by the end of seed week, everyone uh, has access to whatever Facebook page someone comes up with. Um, I know I found out about the one for our class during seed week and it's been a great way to, um, yeah, connect with people, um, uh, ask questions, say like, hey, does anyone have this resource that I'm looking for? Um, so definitely, if someone wants to take initiative on that, um, that's not something that the school does, but um, definitely something to do as a class. Yeah, thanks, Janelle. Did anybody else want to add anything to that? I can add. So, um, yes, the Facebook group was very helpful. Um, and then also being connected, there was an ambassador program um, last year. So I was able to connect with a few students that way. Um, but the Facebook group was a really great way to connect with other people, um, especially since I'm an out-of-state student also and I commute. Um, that I knew no one coming into school. So at least I had a familiar face when I um, started on campus. Um, I, I can add a little more. I think for me, um, I didn't find the Facebook group at first because I was still in California. So what I, I sort of did was like look at online forums that were talking about the school, the University of Michigan, and just seeing like if there were other people from California, because I'm originally from California, um, and I was able to connect with someone um, who was already connected with some of the people that had been accepted into the program who were from California. And so just, that's one way that I was able to like look online and just find other people that were talking about the school and who were going there. So that's also another option if for some reason there's not a Facebook group. Um, but that was a neat way to make uh, build community and meet others that were coming from my general area as well, just so that I didn't feel like I was alone. So most definitely. Yeah, I can add one. It's just like LinkedIn is a quite um, good platform for you to reach out to the current students in the UVM, or maybe some students have already graduated because they have say a portfolio there. You can reach out to them through the LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll just add that um, there is a Canvas page for the MSW program. Um, however, that's more for general updates, um, career postings, and things like that. Um, although I am also going to uplift what um, Emma said in our Q&A, which is there was a page that was already started. Um, and so you can feel free to check that out. All right. Are we good to move on to the next one? Okay, cool. Um, so what are three things you would go back and tell yourself as an incoming MSW student? I could start if that's okay. Um, for me, so a little thing about myself, I had taken around a seven year break from school and I was in the work, uh, in the field and just working in different areas, um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And for sure, one of the things, I don't know if I can think of three things, but for sure, one of the things was realizing um, that I will be doing a lot of group work. Um, and that's not to say that I, I didn't do group work beforehand, like in undergrad, but I didn't realize the amount of group work um, that needed to be done, which is not a bad thing. It's actually a great thing um, because you need to also realize that the people that are in this program with you they're, they are assets to your learning and you're an asset to their learning as well because you bring to the table a lot of skills and experiences that will help them grow. And the hope is that they'll also give you some perspectives or some transferable skill that you're like, oh, wow, I never knew about that resource. I never knew about that practice. Um, and now I could sort of add it to my toolkit or my toolbox. So it's something to keep in mind that there's a lot of group work, but it's 
for me, I found that it to be very helpful. So that's one thing to think about. Jordan, can you repeat the question again? Absolutely. Um, it was, what are three things you would go back and tell yourself as an incoming MSW student? Um, I guess I can go next. Um, I would tell myself to like be prepared to plan out everything because if you're working internship and going to class, make sure you have like a planner, or write things down constantly to remind yourself so you won't be overwhelmed. And um, I don't know, just be prepared to kind of have a lot to do. Um, if you are having a lot going on working and internship in school, um, I will also say get involved. Don't, you know, get too much into your work. You know, it is grad school and it's important, but, you know, get involved in clubs and organizations and um, things like that. Um, and lastly, hmm, I guess definitely use the networking opportunities because those are very helpful when you graduate and when you're still in school. Yep, that's what I would tell myself. I can go next. Um, so one thing that was told to me, but I really didn't take into consideration until like winter semester uh, was to advocate for yourself. So whether it's for classes or projects and in your um, field placement, just being able to um, stand up for yourself, ask for help if you need it. And also, um, as Julia said, to get involved. There are a lot of resources on campus. Um, just know you're not alone. Um, another thing would be to rest <laughs> and prioritize uh, as much as possible. Learn how to rest. Um, because if not, you will get burnt out and that is not something that you want to do because um, it will affect your work. And also just enjoy the experience. Um, it's We're all learning and that's what we're here to do. Um, we're learning about social work and we're learning about ourselves. So that whole imposter syndrome is a thing, but also don't let it um, hinder you from doing what you need to do. So as an international student, as I think from my perspective, yes, you have to be bold and uh, be brave enough to try as much as you can. Do not just like limit your thoughts about yourself. So we, uh, we, uh, we are told like this, just like we have to think out of the box. So just, just like, okay, I'm a community organization student, so I will not take any, um, was that just like interpersonal practice courses such like this one? No, uh, because many courses here is just like overlapped, so you can have a try and you will have no idea when you will have the new ideas from different people and uh, just like um, talk as much people in the school of social work as possible because most folks in the school of social work are very supportive and they are very caring, yeah. All right, well, I'm seeing two pretty popular questions at the top of the Q&A, um, one submitted ahead of time, which is um, how difficult is it to have a job while in this program, especially when having classes in the field, but also, oops, sorry, put me down at the bottom. So many questions are coming in. Um, <laughs> there, I know there was one about, were, are you able to have a part-time job while you are in school? Um, I think I answered that one um, through the typing already. Okay, I don't know if anybody wanted to expand on that in person. I was going to speak from my personal experience, yeah, which is that um, you are more than able to balance those things if that's a priority for you. Um, it does depend on your situation. There are a lot of different jobs that you can seek out on campus and off campus too. Um, you, a lot of work study positions um, are available throughout campus. Um, and so you can look at those. There's a big employment database that you can take a look at. I just Whatever you do, I recommend um, starting your search early if that's something that you want to prioritize. And then also um, 
keep in mind that you want to have a manageable balance between work and school priorities. Um, I wouldn't try um, and overload yourself too much the first semester. Maybe try and see uh, what works best for you. Um, that was really helpful for me to get a feel for things at first and then kind of um, take on more hours as I, I got used to things. All right, if no one else wants to chime in on that one, um, <laughs> we'll go ahead with, um, in a post-COVID world, what are some of the things you would have missed by not being on campus for your program? Any suggestions um, for how to stay connected uh, with the school of social work culture while doing distance learning? Which is a great question that I think is on a lot of people's minds right now. <laughs> Um, I think a little bit for me has been um, staying connected to the people I already know. I know that's because I had been on campus previously, but the um, I know like the student union has hosted like Netflix watch parties. Um, some student organizations plan like game nights um, and joining some of those like organizations or following some of those organizations that kind of already have those events in place can be a really good way to um, connect with people through this like weird virtual space we have. Yeah, I'll personally add, um, I know that um, the school has been hosting these Zoom sessions where it's meant to represent like a virtual I don't know, I can't remember what they're called, but uh, like, you know, you would meet someone in the hallway and just chat for a second and say, hey. And so they're hosting these Zoom pop-in hours where you can kind of just pop in and, and kind of uh, say hey to whoever's in the room um, to kind of replicate that, that interaction that we're missing from being virtual right now. I can go next. So I think, for me personally, um, me and uh, colleagues, it's not programs that were put on by the university, but some things that we put on. Um, we put in, we put on three sessions called Schools and Sessions, and it was around um, social work identity and um, current events. And so I think being in school and being on campus, we would not have been able to do that just because of time constraints. Um, like I said, with me as a commuter, I'm on the road. Well, I was on the road for like two hours a day um, and would not have been, would not have had the energy to even think about doing anything like that. Um, so for me, I, I don't necessarily think it was like what the school could have done, but like me as a student, just coming up with different um, ideas and programs that I would like to see and having those implemented um, and also just being able to connect with other people and learn from other people. There's a COVID series uh, that's been going on. It's been extremely insightful um, about just about different topics, but a lot like the most recent ones about police brutality and race and intersectionality. Um, and so being like experiencing COVID has brought this up. But if we were just going through the motions of what was considered normal at the time, I don't think we would have had those opportunities. Um, I think for me, uh, I going back to what everyone was saying that there's there's some events that the schools put on that the professors are leading and sometimes there's different topics. And I found that because I was busy going to class or, um, you know, heading home or doing any other stuff, I missed out, like some of you have said, on some of those events because I'm like, oh, I just don't have time. And now I've realized that I've been going to a lot of them and it's a great way to connect with professors that are doing important work or even professors that you might be interested in taking and getting to know them a lot better, the more personal aspect. Um, and that's, for me, I found that very neat. I've been able to connect with professors and uh, just talk about some of my interests and my future career plans and, and things of that nature. So that's definitely something 
um, that I didn't do as often, but now I do it because it's just a virtual thing. I'm like, oh, you know what? I can, I have 30 minutes. I can hop on really quickly and see what this professor is talking about and see um, what there is to see. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, that segues really well into a question that's up at the top in two different places. So what are some ways to establish relationships with professors, but then also what is your relationship like with your advisor and how do you get the most out of this relationship? So I'll kind of pair those together, um, relationships with your advisor and professor and how to maximize those um, and experiences you've had in cultivating that relationship. Um, I can start off that one. I think one way to build connections with, with your professors, especially over this like weird Zoom classroom setting that we're in, is to have your video on and speak up. Um, it's not always easy to do and, um, and can feel a little bit vulnerable, but I think professors really do appreciate that and recognize that. Um, and then beyond that, um, during this virtual time, sending emails, asking questions. Um, I found that the professors really do want to connect with students. They just don't always have the time to take the initiative on that. So um, being the one to say like, hey, I'd really like to learn more about this. Um, they're more than happy to connect if, if you take that first step. I agree with um, Janelle, sending emails and also you can um, set up like a one-on-one -on -one Zoom um video chat to connect with your professors and get any questions of on assignments you have yeah i'd say some of the same things i think communication is really important um and so beforehand i was doing more of um, before COVID, I should say, I was doing more of the like pop by an office hour or stay after class, especially if a professor has a research interest that's in common with you or their, or, you know, their methods are something that you're interested in doing more of. Um, maybe you even want to get involved with their research in some capacity. Um, so having those extra conversations, but yeah, nowadays it is a lot of like, can I make this Zoom hour and sending them an email? Um, yeah, and just keeping communication lines open. And that's the same, I would say, with your advisor as well. Um, and I think most professors try and be an accommodating, uh, try and be as accommodating as possible. And my professors have been pretty open to scheduling Zooms and um, Blue Jeans, which is just another video, you know, chatting software, <laughs> um, whenever um, we're able to find the time in common. Yeah, just to add one, just like uh, Professor Katie Doyle, and she's also hosting some social, um, virtual social hours uh, across the uh, school, and just I like, invite everyone to commute during this pandemic time. Yeah. Um, let's jump a little bit to um, student orgs um, right now. So what are some student orgs that maybe we're all involved in? Um, how's your experience been? And I know somebody also did ask um, how are, how do you think, are clubs and social organizations offering online remote opportunities for those who can't make it to campus this fall? So maybe let's talk generally about our experience with those. Um, I've really enjoyed getting involved in some student organizations. Um, they're just in general a great way to meet people with similar interests, um, maybe something outside of the field that you're interested in or something very much related to your field. Um, as far as remote stuff goes, um, one of the organizations I'm in has like a huge group chat. So we like send each other uplifting, encouraging statements when um, kind of all of this started and that was really nice. Um, another organization I'm part of has done some like virtual meetings. Um, I think we have like a virtual game night at one point. Um, it kind of, 
I think it varies by organization depending on how involved everyone is, but um, they definitely have made that switch to online engagement in, in my experience. I can go next. Um, I think for me, I've, I've been involved with the Latinx Coalition on campus, and it's been really neat how they've transitioned from obviously on campus, we couldn't do any more on campus in, uh, events and moving to virtual. Um, and a lot of the things that Janelle said, like mirror some of the things that we've done as well, like doing like, you know, virtual meetups or just talks or discussions, um, but also going to their virtual events because a lot of times, a lot of these uh, um, on-campus group uh, or like the student organizations, they have professors that come and be uh, and are speakers for some of their events. So it's really neat. That's another way to also connect with professors, but also um, connect with other students um, that might be of your interest. And then the other aspect is also think about some of the students that may be in your class. Um, they sort of sometimes create their own groups as well. Like for me, I'm a geriatric scholar. Um, and there's like around roughly like 20 of us. Um, and now we have like a geriatric book club. And so there's always like a book that we're reading. And I think it's a nice way of like being able to read at home and then talking to someone about it, like what we think about certain themes or certain policies or, or just any of the discussions that we talk about in a book. So that's also an option to turn to your peers as well. Um, uh, because you'll be taking classes with a lot of people and you'll be surprised you might be taking a class with someone for two of your classes or three of your classes or most of your classes um, because you're all studying generally some of the same things. So that's also an option. Okay, I can go. Um, I am in ABSW, which is the Association of, for Black Social Work Students and also in the Students of Color of Rackham, but that's through my um, field placement site. And then I'm also like a new leader scholar, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we have been doing online meetings. Um, I know winter semester, even pre-COVID, um, they started offering online sessions uh, for people who couldn't make it. So that was very helpful, um, especially since I didn't want to be there too late. That was very, very helpful for me. Um, so I would suggest if you do have a question about it and it's something that you are interested in, we have May's pages, which offers like all of the student organizations and you can see um, the contact person's information to see if they are a willing or if they already offer those online um, meetings. Yeah, as someone who commutes from a little while away, I'll say actually that this whole experience has made some like a student orgs as well as like events more accessible to me um, than it was before because I would typically leave campus um, almost right after classes because it's a really long day. Um, you know, it's, you need to find balance. I'm struggling a little bit because now I'm maybe attending too many things. Um, so the struggle can uh, it's a, it's finding a balance, but actually um, student orgs have become more accessible to me now um, than they were previously. So, yeah. All right, maybe we'll pivot a little bit um, to field placements. Um, we can talk about our field placements. Um, someone was asked uh, beforehand, did you get a field placement in the service area you wanted? How has that impacted your learning experience? Um, all of those sorts of, sorts of things. I can speak to that um, a little bit. I um, did get a field placement in my um, area of interest. I um, am an interpersonal practice student, uh, mental health. So um, I got a placement in a um, small private practice. Um, and because of that, I've been able to um, combine a lot of my field experience and what I'm learning in classes and have both of them kind of um, um, influence the other. So I can take what I learned in class and apply it to field and I can take a situation in field and ask questions about it in class. 
Um, so that's been a great experience um, for me with um, having a field placement in um, my area of interest. Uh, I can go next. Uh, for me, I also was placed in the area of my interest. Um, so the thing is about me, I wanted to, well, I want, I'm working with the aging population, but I also wanted to do on the intersections of LGBTQ. Um, so my first, uh, my first internship, I get two internships because of my scholarship, um, but it might be different depending on what track you are and if you're on a, in a special program. Um, my first one was at a uh, senior day center, and so I was able to work with a lot of aging um, clients. Um, but I was also missing that LGBT portion that I wanted to do and something to remedy that I was doing research with a professor who was focusing on LGBT and also doing um, work around aging and how they inter intersect. Um, and then now in my second internship, uh, I was able to work with my field faculty advisor to really advocate and craft for an internship that I really wanted because I wanted um, an internship that sort of across both of those interns in intersections. And we were able to definitely work something out with the school. And I'm now working um, at a nonprofit uh, that works with uh, aging LGBTQ and like giving them direct services. Um, and it's really great. And I really love the fact that the school um, and a lot of the professionals really listen to you and, and sort of try to figure out a way to meet the needs that you feel will help you grow professionally. So that's something to keep in mind to advocate for yourself as well. Um, if you don't, for some reason, feel like an internship may not be working out. Yeah, I can go next. I think uh, I'm also have uh, interest of my field placement and I'm um, my concentration area is community organization. So I just like did uh, uh, what I did in the International Center is uh, assisting the global engagement and the education abroad team to do some uh, projects focused on the um, international communities affiliated with uh, U of M. But the, even though my focus area is children, youth, and families, and uh, my uh, focus targeted people in the international center is mostly uh, students at our age, so this kind of may be something different, but something is good because I talk about uh, this with my uh, supervisor in the School of Social Work and also uh, with um, um, a field, field supervisor in the International Center. So we, now we are just like creating uh, some project uh, focused on the international families with kids. So I will focus on the children in the future, so which is good. I mean, you have to, uh, it's quite important to talk and have conversations with your supervisors for your field. Just like Alberto said, uh, it's important for you to advocate yourself, yeah. Yeah, my field experience has been pretty awesome. Um, and actually I was doing quite a bit of remote work before the pandemic began. And so that was actually not as bad of a shift as I know. It's been, it's been difficult um, depending on what kind of work you were doing ahead of time. But um, it's been extremely, um, there's been a lot of opportunities to get involved in different things. Like I, I knew I wanted to be doing policy work, but also combining that with um, youth leadership development and um, developing like youth developing policy priorities and like just different intersections of things that I didn't know or think I wanted um, has been really awesome and um, the experience was really um, great um, interviewing and whatnot um, and yeah I definitely just recommend as you go through the application process to um, you'll have a chance to write a personal statement and to talk about the things that you can bring to a placement and also the things that you want to learn and get out of the placement. And that way, those things will be paired to give you the best, um, you know, our, our, um, our field advisors in, in the Office of Field Education are really good and know placements really well. They've developed so many relationships with different agencies and nonprofits. Um, and so they can help you um, based on those different things, bring that together to find a good fit for you. So, yeah.
All right, we'll hop to the next one. Um, what do you see MSW students struggle with the most? And Alicia, I don't know if you want to talk to that. I know you mentioned the importance of self-care and <laughs> balancing uh, different things, not to put you on the spot or anything. Sleep. <laughs> um, <laughs> sleep is what we struggle with the most. I, um, I struggle with it only because I was like so wound up when I got home and then I had to like commute. It was just a mess. But um, I think that's it. And I'm not sure what I have seen struggle. I know rest is like a huge one. Um, if anybody else has anything they've experienced or seen anyone or heard. Yeah, I, I want to add one. Uh, readings. So, <laughs> yeah, um, professors do just like assign a lot of readings, maybe compared to the uh, law, law school students, or maybe just like less because they have to do maybe 100 papers, does not, 100 pages every day, kind of stuff. We, we will not have such amount of pages, but uh, we will have, I think it's a lot of readings. So, um, at the very beginning, I feel like, okay, I, I was ex expected to just like read everything. So just like <laughs> Alicia said, okay, we will have no time for sleeping. So then you have to um, figure out how to scheme, how to escape uh, some and uh, just like maybe do some summary of that. Otherwise, you will have no time to, for sleep. Yeah. I agree with Tammy. I just read the abstract and the summaries <laughs> um, and it was like feeling I'm like, okay, I don't understand that. And then go back. So yes, skimming is a, a skill that you really want to learn um, and highlighting is anything that's italicized, bolded, make sure you look at those because we do have a lot of readings. Some range from five pages and they're usually scholarly journals to 80. It just depends. Yeah, so to echo everything that both Alicia and Tammy have said, definitely learn to skim. Um, one of my professors was really great about teaching us how to skim, at least in my experiences. I don't think this is the overall experience, but I know I had a professor who was very honest, like, I'm not expecting you all to read all these things, but these are things that you should have in your toolkit if you ever want to reference back. And she gave us some really great tools and um, tips to skim, but also, um, think about your classmates. Sometimes they're like, let's do a reading group and someone will just divide, you know, we divide the readings. If you really want to get, you know, all the pointers for each of the articles that you're reading, definitely that's also an option. Start a reading group. I've, I've been in those and that's been helpful as well. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper into um, student employment opportunities. I know we sort of briefly kind of touched about it earlier um, and, and folks are asking about GSI and GSSA positions, um, GA positions, TA positions, things like that. Um, I don't know, do any of us have a particular experience with that or can speak to that based on what we've heard from other students? Uh, I can say a little bit. I, I don't have uh, GSI or GSSA uh, experience. However, there's been a lot of uh, so a lot of my friends who have done it, and there is opportunities um, to work prof with professors or take on a position. Um, and depending on what department you're working on uh, or sort of the requirements, sometimes um, there's great benefits to obviously getting paid, and also sometimes they even cover parts of, a portion of your tuition. Um, but you really have to look uh, at the department that you're working in and what 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 that outlines. So um, another thing, obviously, I'm working here at the OSS. Uh, I did that through work study, and um, I like I had mentioned before, I also did research. So that was also a paid uh, position, um, which is something I wasn't expecting. I, I was just interested in the research, but then the professor that I was working with was like, "Well, I can also pay you if you like." Um, so you can, you know, use your work study as well. So 
So I have um, a friend or a couple of friends who were GSIs in other departments. Uh, departments, um, one was sociology, and I forget what the other one was, but they enjoyed them, um, especially the benefits and uh, just having an opportunity to teach um, students is something that was a passion of theirs. So it's possible. You just have to go to the um, career site and there's a drop down that filters out the opportunities. I'm not sure what fall is looking like, but if they do have anything posted, it would be there um, that you can look out or um, if there's something of interest to you, uh, you can always reach out to the professors, just send out an email, especially for research opportunities um, or independent studies. Yeah, that's a great point. Always like just reach, send out and reach, like send an email if you're interested in any of those types of things. There's no like harm in doing that usually. Um, and then also uh, just like Alicia mentioned, like. The, there aren't any like GA positions in the School of Social Work, and that's because there isn't an undergraduate major in social work. We do have a minor um, in CAS, which is Community Action. Oh, wait, CAS, Community Action Social Change. There we go. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, so you wouldn't, it wouldn't be in the School of Social Work, but yeah, sociology um, and other departments have all sorts of positions there. And, and those, um, graduate student staff assistant positions and grad instructor positions come with tuition benefits um, as well as like health insurance and living stipends, things like that. However, work studies on the other hand don't. Um, so there's a distinction there. Um, at the top of our questions, I see what are some of your favorite social and community activist groups to get involved in uh, inside or outside of the School of Social Work? Well, I would definitely say um, to get to know the community, there are a lot of different things going on, uh, both on campus and off of campus, um, depending on the issues that you're interested in. Um, following on social media, the different pages you're interested in um, for events and events have a lot of events have shifted virtually um, during this time. So there are plenty of opportunities to um, get involved in activism and um, uh, yeah, both direct action and otherwise um, at this current moment. Um, I, I definitely think that uh, following Black Lives Matter Michigan and Lansing is really important uh, in this current moment. And so that's something that I personally do and recommend. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any other pages they would like to recommend put out there. I think for me, I've been listening to a lot of uh, because after COVID, um, I saw a lot of students really from our program really take leadership and start their own initiatives um, and sort of their own components. So like something that I follow right now is, uh, it's called Social Work as Hail. Um, and they have, it's run by two students. I'm trying to remember the second student. I, one of them is Brianna Tesh, which also happens to be our student union president. Um, and they have different professors and different social workers come as guest speakers on their podcast and they talk about their work and they also talk about different ways to get involved um, through a social lens and, and become an activist um, and continue activist work in the community within you know our COVID-19 uh, situation but definitely yeah that's one way that I've, I've been sort of keeping myself in the loop and informed to sort of always live those those um, those core values as well uh, to try to be involved um, even though we're in this uh, you know public health situation so yeah so as an international student in the school of social work i will definitely recommend uh, international students coffee hour in the school of social work it's quite, uh, I think, interesting and because you can hear different perspectives from different students across the world. 
and especially for this year because uh, you you guys maybe have some people uh, pursue the global social work pathway. So it's good to hear from uh, folks from different countries to tell about what the social work looks like in their country. And we will also focus on the current events happened. And yeah, it's quite interesting. Okay, so I know there are so many more questions uh, we have. We are ending uh, at about six o'clock, so um, we um, we can go over a little bit, but let's um, talk a little bit about moving out of state and day-to-day -day life in the School of Social Work. Um, so maybe that's a few different things for different uh, ones of us, depending on our experience, but talk a little bit about that. And then also please do know that we have more webinars coming up addressing certain like subsets of these questions and different issues. So please stay on the lookout um, via email and on the school social work website for those uh, future opportunities. And you'll see some of our faces again. Uh, I could speak a little bit to that. Um, so I'm originally from Compton, California, Los Angeles area. So definitely, one thing that I noticed when getting to Michigan, or at least in the area that I live in, it's very slow paced. Because in Los Angeles and Compton, it's always like there's always a hustle and bustle and it's more fast paced. So that was definitely an adjustment, realizing that the pace of life here is a little different. But also in the same light, I like that there was a lot of natural open spaces here. Um, a lot of it's you could see the seasons here, which is something you don't usually see, at least where I lived in California. Like you see spring, winter and fall, you see the colors change, which is amazing. There's a lot of different natural spaces uh, and places to go and visit and have pit picnics and just like, you know, spend time outside. Um, what other transition I'm trying to think? Um, definitely when I did miss like that hustle and bustle, I would, in the beginning, I would go down to uh, Metro Detroit uh, just to like go to different places that uh, I hadn't visited before. They have great museums there uh, and things of that nature. Um, but yeah, those are some of the things that come to mind. I don't know who else is out of state from here. I think it's, is it Alicia? I'm also out of state. Um, I'm originally from Washington. Um, so different climate than Michigan and different climate from California. Um, so if you're not from a place where there's snow most of the winter, prepare for snow for most of the winter. Um, I, I would honestly say invest in good like winter gear because you're even if you're driving to campus or live close to campus, that five minute walk is really going to get you. <laughs> um, that's yeah, one one thing is just like the seasons um, are the seasons are beautiful, like uh, Alberto said, but they're they're a little intense too. Yeah, Jenna, I'm glad you brought that up. Definitely get some snow gear for sure, and like plan ahead if you know. I've learned to now just ask or look up what the weather's going to look like. It just became part of my routine. I'm like what does the weather look like? Because then it'll help me think, okay, maybe I should leave 20 minutes earlier because if I choose to drive and it's snowing, I may, may be late to class um, because, you know, everyone's on the road. Um, and especially if you're not used to driving on the snow, for me, I would suggest that in the snow time, I use the parking lots of where I live to sort of practice because it's totally different uh, driving in the snow. Um, so keep that in mind, definitely put in some practice, maybe find a local Michigander that sort of knows and has driven in the snow. They give a lot of great pointers. I know my partner has given me a lot of great pointers about driving in the snow. So definitely keeping that in mind, but also keep, keep in mind that some professors are also very understanding. I've had professors tell me like, you know, I'm, it's okay. Like if the storm is really bad, sometimes you might not ha even have to come in, they'll, they'll do remote. Um, I mean, right now we're doing remote for the most part, but professors tend, tend to be understanding. So, yeah. yeah, Alberto, I agree. I live like 45 minutes away, and yet I worked before I enrolled uh, into school. And so I was always like from my car to an office building. 
But then when I enrolled at school, I was taking a bus and I had a moment where I was, I wanted to be cute for a while. And that lasted for about a week. And so <laughs> I had snow boots, thick socks, gloves that are like thick insulated gloves, hat, scarves, the whole get up, bought a new coat, everything. So, um, and our weather is similar, but Ann Arbor winter is not Toledo winter. They differ. Uh, it's a, the air is colder. It's very cold. So I've been up here uh, like in the north my entire life, and I am still not used to it. Um, still not drive like driving in the snow is not fun. There was it was in November, which was like the bad snow. That wasn't fun because we didn't know. So I have like friends um, in Ann Arbor who will let me know what the weather was before I got to Ann Arbor, just because Toledo, like the day that it snowed really bad, um, it ended up coming in Toledo too. But um, when I left home, it was fine. And then as I approached Ann Arbor, I was like, where is the snow coming from? And then it snowed all day. And then it took me two hours to get home instead of 45 minutes. Um, but that was just a nuance. That was totally unexpected. Um, but yeah, definitely check the weather, be prepared and snow gear is something that you want to invest in. And I think also apart from learning how to drive on the snow, I know it sounds funny to say learning how to walk on snow. Um, because what you don't realize sometimes the snow melts and then it refreezes but that, that turns into black ice. So sometimes you're walking and you just slip. And, and so it's, it, I would suggest learning how to walk and they're definitely looking around your surroundings. I have never looked around in my surroundings as much as I do when it snows and I, and I realize that the snow has melted and refrozen again because I'm like, I don't want to be slip and you know go, get an injury and then end up going to the hospital or something like that. So keep that in mind. Also learning how to walk um, and don't underestimate a big pile of snow sometimes you'll just sink in so keeping you know visuals like oh there might not be a sidewalk there or it might not be as high so you'll just sink in <laughs> and especially when you're in a rush you might not realize because you're like trying to get to class and then you're like oh my gosh like i'm almost just fell so keep that in mind as well. <laughs> It is so funny because as a Michigander for my whole life, I'm like thinking now there should be a whole webinar on just dealing with the snow in Michigan, honestly, um, because yeah, it is, you do cultivate the knowledge. Um, kind of on that same vein, I would just recommend tapping into local like news. I'm from Michigan, but like I'm not from Ann Arbor or Washtenaw County. So like um, the one point about like having a friend text you the weather, that is, that is a really great tip. Um, if you're not in the area and you're commuting, um, but even like, I don't know, signing up for text or email, like listservs for different things in the area, especially if you're out of state, I think that can help connect you into the community a little bit quicker. Um, if anybody else wants to add anything before I move on to our last question, please go ahead. I don't want to rush us. Yeah, I just want to add one more point. It's just like, okay, so we're talking about the snow time in winter. So just uh, keep in mind when you just like manage your class, uh, course schedule, if you live far away from the school, so do not try not to just like choose a late night courses. Otherwise, if just like snow happens, it's very difficult for you to go back home. And especially uh, not uh, choose some maybe too early courses, morning courses, if just like snow happens, it's very difficult for you to, you have to dig out of your car from the snow. So yeah, it's time consuming. Yeah, just keep in mind. All right, let's do one more final question. And please remember, again, there are many more opportunities to engage with us and ask us more questions. And again, we will respond to the questions that are in the chat and you will get a copy of them. Um, but talk a little bit about day-to-day -day life and uh, choosing your concentration. How did you go about doing that? I can go. So mine was a long process um, of elimination and also self-reflection. So 
prior to um, applying, I worked for a nonprofit and we did uh, programming uh, for infant mortality. And initially I wanted to do interpersonal practice uh, with the focus on mental health. And then I reflected on my personality and knew that wasn't a good fit for me. Uh, just after reading um, like the school's website and other research like I did um, by myself. So just like looking online and figuring out or finding like information about the lives of uh, people who do that. Um, and so it was really where my interests lie, knowing my personality and knowing what I wanted to do post-graduation and overall um, that that's how I decided. But also knowing that, you know, your your pathways will not be the end all be all. These are skills and your your life learner. Um, and so this is just like your foundation and you will always be learning. So um, don't limit yourself on like what you can do. You can do so much um, with your degree. Um, I can try to speak a little bit to the day-to-day -day life aspect of that question. Um, it's a lot of classes, a lot of field work, a lot of homework, um, and then trying to prioritize that self-care, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, I think for for me, day-to-day -day life, I kind of, I enjoy routines, so I kind of set up a routine for myself um, of when I was going to do homework and when I was going to put homework aside and go out with friends, um, have Zoom meetings nowadays, um, and when to like engage in um, other types of like learning activities, attending lectures, those sorts of things. Um, so there's definitely like opportunities to kind of like spice up your day-to-day -day life with um, some like extra events going on. But a lot of times it's, it's school, field, homework, uh, and then trying to like get in some sleep in there sometimes too. Yeah, um, choosing my pathway was something that um, I actually applied to uh, not only schools of social work, but um, public policy, like MSW, MPPs, Masters of Public Policies as well. And um, I decided like settled on the school of social work because it was important for me to approach policy analysis from not a value neutral perspective, but rather grounded in some of the same social work values um, that were really important to me um, because uh, disparities are uh, evident. And I think self reinforcing in policy most times, sometimes we create solutions that end up exacerbating the same problems over and over again. Um, so that's kind of how I settled on my pathway. So I think it can be um, informed by your experiences and um, reading the website is a great place to start with that. And you can shift as well as when you come in um, uh, from what you started, you can shift. And I don't even think sometimes you don't have to declare um, your, your pathway. Yeah, um, 16 and 21 students don't actually choose their final pathway until October when you're applying for field. So just know that as you come in, if you're in one of those two groups, you won't have to do that right away. And um, day to day for me, someone even asked in the Q&A, um, self-reflection is um, really important. <laughs> like, how do you find time for self-reflection as a social work student? That's something that I did not know about social work before get, coming to it. But it is, it makes sense that reflexivity, understanding your positionality and how it informs your um, view on the world and policy and practice is crucial. Um, and I have recently taken up journaling. I'm hoping I'm going to stick with it. I've tried it at other points in my life before and haven't been as great at it. But um, my day to day um, is like commuting to campus, getting on class. I tend to stack my classes, which is not something everybody does. But um, and then so it's either usually a field day or a class day for me. And I try and wrap up the day with uh, setting boundaries, getting away from school a little bit, um, you know, focusing on something else that's fun, hanging out with friends, and then also I'm trying to incorporate journaling. So that is also a part of my day-to-day -day right now. And let me just add though, there is an exception if you are in a special program, if you come in, uh, you, you will have to select your um, pathway ahead of time.
Anybody else want to speak to your day to day as well as choosing your pathway? I can speak on the day to day too. Um, well, definitely changed now, but I, uh, when we were on campus, I would have um, my field days and then I would have my class days. I know there were some people that did class and field. And I knew like on one day that didn't work for me. So you just have to know like what works best for you. There's not one single answer. Just um, I know what my commute was and it could be a 12 hour day some days. And so I didn't want to extend it too long. And so that's why I did class on certain days and then filled on other days. Um, the only time I would get tripped up if there were uh, activities on campus and I wasn't on campus, I would be upset about that, but I would just kind of go with it and um, attend something when I was on campus. I think for me, my day to day, I really like looking at my calendar, looking at what needs to be done, but also going back that there should be a routine to sort of like help keep flow and keep you organized. Um, but also thinking about self-care is very important, your physical and mental health. Like I know for me in undergrad, I, I wasn't very good about that. But when I came into this program, I decided, you know what, there's going to be one day of the week that I'm not going to do any form of work. It doesn't matter what to do. Like I'm going to focus on myself. And if I need to ask for an extension, then I'm going to ask for that extension. Um, and it's something to keep in mind that you can, you're, the professors that I, I felt have been very approachable when it comes to this program and they've been very understanding of like oh sure I'll give you an extension um, if that's an assignment that you know you need more time to work on um, but yeah definitely thinking about your, your your physical and mental health like for me I take a day usually it's Fridays where it's like I'm only going to focus on things that I enjoy doing whether it's cooking play video games talking to my partner spending time with friends um, or anything of that nature. So like making sure you craft time for yourself, make time for yourself, because sometimes it's easy to be like, oh, I, I'll, I'll do this later, I'll, I'll come back to this later. Um, and don't consider sleep like as like, you know, giving yourself, like sleep is necessary. Like you should do something for yourself. Like, so, yeah. Yeah, for me as an international student, I think I'm, I'm a non-traditional student because my bachelor is nothing about social work, it's something about food science. So my first term here in the School of Social Work, I just like, okay, I wanted to try everything. So I stacked it on my calendar and always just like um, 24 hours, seven days, just like, okay, just like four of events. And so my first term, it feels like, oh my God, what's that? Just like, I was totally overwhelmed. And you cannot just like have time to digest every specific event. So for me, so the so winter term, it feels like a little more smoothly and I only choose which my interest in. And so I think because there's so many events happens in school of social work and across the campus every day. So you can have to choose by yourself and depend on your interests. So not only the, you know, the school uh, courses and the assignments, and there are also some, uh, you know, activities, especially on weekends, you know, have fun, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone uh, who is answering questions with me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and sign off right about now. We're a little bit over time. But again, please know that there are more webinars that are upcoming for you to um, ask questions about specific topics, um, as well as uh, just know that a recording of this is also going to be sent out uh, with these questions that have been coming in responses. So you can look forward to uh, receiving that. Anybody else have anything last minute to add? Thank you all for sticking it out with us and also uh, just be on the lookout for emails. They can get a little overwhelming, uh, but just to be sure, um, we have virtual events coming up uh, for you all to kind of get to know each other. Uh, so be on the lookout for those. 
I also just wanted to say real quick, we know we didn't get to all of your questions right now. We are going to try to answer them all with some uh, typed questions when we log off. So hopefully we'll be able to still answer your question even if we didn't get to it now. So be on the lookout for um, those, that chat log, the Q&A log, and then this recording later. Yeah, thank you all for coming and, and answering really great questions. And you'll see more of us in the other webinars. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, just like you, you guys have already step one, uh, just like step four the, to be a professional uh, social worker. So yeah, just a congratulations and uh, welcome. Saying thank you so much for yeah coming to this webinar. Hi everyone, thanks for coming.